In this video, how I created a concrete patio from a useless area of yard space. Stick around. First thing I did was I removed the grass, got rid of the organics. Then I tried to grade the ground to a level that I thought would work well for this project. Then I brought in form boards and I laid them out loosely to get a rough idea. And I went ahead and I set the stakes for the very first form board. Now since this is a porch, we do want the water to shed off. And typically what we do is run like a line with a pitch in that line. In this case, I'm going to use the old porch patio and follow that pitch. However, I wanna keep the new pad below the height of the existing porch flap. So what I'm gonna do is simply I'm just gonna take this two by four scrap piece, it's an inch and a half. I'm gonna use that to make marks on my existing pad and follow those marks to get my new pitch. I'm gonna follow the pitch on this side and then I'll keep that pitch throughout all the way down, but I'll probably put a little bit of pitch this way too to keep the water going this way. So first things first, I'm going to attach this board to these stakes, get it set as my kind of primary starting point, and then I'll work the rest of the form off of this. So I made a line with the block here, and then I transferred that line with the level here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use that to mark the height of where I tack off my form board. Then I'm gonna come in with a couple screws. I'm gonna to try to come in from behind. I may have to put one or two in here, but that's okay. It's nice that I have these long stakes, so when I go to break the form, I can use these stakes as leverage. But I will try to get the screws from the back if I can. Now with this form board in place, I'm gonna use it to reference all the other form boards. So first what I do is set this one over here, and I wanna find the length for the space in between. And in this case, I want the edge of the new concrete pad to coincide with this corner. So I'm simply just gonna take a measurement from my form board to that corner. In this case, it's 83. And I'm going to match that down there as well. Now I'll do is tack some stakes in and then fine tune my pitch and everything from there. I used a string and line level to mark a line on the new stakes at the same level of the first form board. So now that I got these two sides up, I simply need to attach the end piece and don't really need to measure because it just goes from this end, butted up to here, and then it will cap off on that side and just tack this off. And I'm keeping this in line with my porch plane here. So now I just tack this off and I'll have most of my form ready to go. But what's nice about this is since I have these two set up, that means when I just tack this on where it's supposed to go, it will be in the right alignment for the correct pitch. So boom. I screw on these temporary blocks just to help make sure that my form board is level with the other forms. Okay, so I've got the whole perimeter form in place now. The takeaway from this was, is I wanted to have as flat a surface as possible, but I wanted it to shed water this way away from the house. And then I actually wanted it to shed water this way a little bit too, because I have to leave some space between the new pad and the house. And one of the primary reasons it's for that is to be able to treat for termites every few years or so. But by leaving that space, if the water rushes down in there, it could kind of channel some of the soil out of there. Instead of having water rush in there, I put it a little bit of pitch this way as well. And the way I did that is when I ran that line, I got the level mark off that line, and then I drew a mark in about an inch less than that. And that gives me just a little bit of pitch this way. So I boxed off the rest back there. I just took a level board and went that way and then kind of connected the two boards there. So I'm gonna be a little high in the back. I'll pitch this way and this way, and we're good to go. So now next what I'll do is tomorrow I think I get some of my supplies, a tamper and the bad concrete. So I'll tamper all this down, get this nice and compact. And then I'll probably dig little ditches around the perimeter. And then I'm gonna decide, can I fill all this all at once myself or pour it all at once, mix all the bags myself and do this? or do I wanna do this in two sections? So we'll see what happens and go from there.
All right, so I decided for a few reasons to split this project up into two separate isolated slabs. One is just logistics. This is just me doing this project. I hand mix these bags. I don't really feel like mixing them all at once just to make sure it'd go a lot easier if I break it up. So I'm gonna do this section first and then that section. And then two, it's gonna give me a break point. I'm gonna do a cold joint here where I'll pour this tonight. Hopefully I'll pour that tomorrow. And so that will actually give me kind of a control break point, if you will, whereas if I just had one solid piece, the concrete could possibly crack. And three, since I'm doing this slab or slabs without any reinforcement, I think it's actually the safer way to go. Because what happens is if I were to get any isolated flexion, I guess is a good way to think of it. It's one long pad. It's more likely to crack somewhere. However, if I have two individual pads, the concrete may move independently of each other and be less likely to crack. I'm not using reinforcement in this rebar or mesh or anything like that. And I don't think it's necessary for this kind of a small project. I'm not gonna put a lot of weight on this. Maybe a couple of people walking it, that's it. No big trucks or anything like that. Rebar is really most effective for flexion type forces. Concrete can handle a lot of compression forces. So you just walk in, it's fine. The problem is, is if you have a lot of weight in one area, like say if something touches here, it may actually bend the concrete and that bending is gonna stretch the concrete and that will actually crack it. But on something like this, it's not really a big deal because I'm not gonna have a lot of weight on it. So I'm not worried about it. That's more important for like big beams or heavy duty pads, things like that. So for this, it should be fine. Now, the other thing I did is I dug little trenches, kind of like little footers, if you will, but they'll kind of do a couple things. They'll kind of beef up the concrete at the edges. And then two, it might help minimize sliding movement because I have kind of these recesses in the ground. Next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this area with some chunk concrete that I already have. You gotta be careful with this because of the pieces you put in here are too tall or the concrete pads too shallow you potentially could get some cracking through the concrete where that structure is so I'm gonna experiment with anyway and put some in but I'm gonna put probably the bigger pieces in these ditches here and I think I'm gonna be okay and plus the old concrete chunks will obviously help me on the total volume of concrete I need in here I think what I'll do first though is I'm gonna oil these forms with some used motor oil just to kind of help take the forms off and then I'll backfill with some of these rocks and then I'm gonna haul a bunch of concrete back to back here, start mixing and throw it in here. Now, another note is a lot of times when people do a pad like this, they'll put a bunch of gravel in here. And that is a very good idea. And in a perfect world, it would probably be nice to put some gravel underneath this slab. Helps with drainage and some stability and things like that. In this case, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not that worried about it. So anyway, here we go. So first thing, I basically watered down the soil and the rocks, and then I went ahead and opened the concrete and then mixed it with water as instructed. Now note here is I am using fiber reinforced concrete. I think this is a big help, especially when not using reinforcement. And then as I mix it, I simply fill it in between the forms, and then I use straight edge pieces of wood to basically level the concrete between the forms. And in this case, I had to use different sizes pieces of wood because I had that angle of the house that made it a little bit complicated but I ultimately ended up using a flat 2x4 section, laid it down between both forms, and kind of wiggled it back and forth, leveling the concrete as I went. So I'd mix concrete, I'd pour it in, and then I'd use a screed to level it off, and I did that all the way until we were done. So that was exhausting. I don't ever recommend trying to mix concrete by hand. It was a pain in the butt. So I let the concrete sit for a while and then I went and I used a roundover edge for the corners and then I came back with a magnesium trowel to kind of flatten out any rough spots and smooth it out a little bit. Didn't have to be too perfect because then I came back with a broom to do a rough finish just to put some traction on this because it is going to be an outside patio. And then the next day, the first thing I did was I wet the concrete with a hose. It's very important to keep fresh concrete wet for several days at least. And then the exciting part was taking the form off. It's always fun when you take the forms off concrete. I just needed to take this one off for the next pour. But when I took it off, the edge looked pretty good. So I was very happy with it. And there it is. And I invite you guys to take a look at the next video, how I finished this patio and here's what it ultimately ended up looking like. So thanks for watching. I'm Joe Kistel. If you found this helpful, please subscribe or give the video a thumbs up. Take care.